Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white knight's deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is an aggressive tribal deck that has a few disruptive elements thanks to Thoughtseize giving the deck a bit of hand disruption to maybe disrupt an opposing combo or control deck, as well as Fatal Push as an efficient removal spell, which we didn't really have access to before. And then going over some of the knight synergies and payoff cards, we've got a Worthy Knight as a 2-2 human knight saying whenever we cast a knight spell we get to make a 1-1 a white human creature token and then of course at three mana we've got history of banalia making two knight tokens and on the third chapter of the saga giving our knights plus two plus one until end of turn and another addition from one of the anthology expansions kinsbale cavalier for mana for a 2-2 kithkin knight saying and knight creatures we control have a double strike so this can also be an excellent finisher especially in combination with the third chapter from history of banalia and then we also get to play with Banalish Marshal, which is a triple white 3 drop, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so synergizes nicely with the human tokens from Worthy Knight. And we can still cast it thanks to the mana base that we have in Historic, giving us all these dual lands that both make black mana and white mana. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at 1 mana. Besides Thought Seize and Fatal Push, we also get Knight of the Ebon Legion, one of the more powerful 1-drop creatures in the format. A 1-2 Vampire Knight that for 2 and a blank we can give plus 3 plus 3 and Death Touch until end of turn. And at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Knight. And a cool interaction that can sometimes come up is if we cast Thought Seize at the cost of 2 life, and take 2 damage off our own Godless Shrine, we'll have the 4 life loss necessary to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the knight, even if it's not the opponent losing the life. And then we also have our Fatal Push. A few ways to enable revolts include sacrificing our Hisra Benalia on the 3rd chapter, or maybe sacrificing our Dauntless Bodyguard, which is our next 1-drop, a 2-1 Human Knight, that as it enters the battlefield we choose another creature we control, and we can sacrifice a Bodyguard to make that creature indestructible until end of turn. And then we also have a Venerable Knight as another 1 mana 2 1 that when it dies puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target Knight we control. Then at 2 mana, besides our full play set of Worthy Knight, we also have two copies of Knight of Grace, a 2 2 Human Knight with First Strike and Hexproof from Black, so it cannot be targeted by Black spells or abilities our opponents control. And the Knight of Grace gets plus 1 plus so as long as any player controls a Black permanent that also includes our own Black creatures. And then we've got two copies of Knight of Malice, which is essentially the reverse of a Knight of Grace with Hexproof from White. And then at 3 mana, besides Sister Benalia, we also have the full play set of Benalish Marshal, and then two copies of our Kinsbale Cavalier. And then going over the mana base, we could potentially try and include some castles to give us a bit more late game, but our deck's not really looking to get to the late game, we're just trying to apply pressure quickly, maybe disrupt the opponent a tiny bit to take them off balance, and then close out the game. So we're not really planning to play long game, which is why we don't have a ton of castles in the mana base, which would potentially slow the deck down. But we do have the full place of Godless Shrine, which also helps with our isolated chapel coming into play untapped alongside four basic planes. Then a four concealed courtyard, which is also a big addition from Colored remastered and bright climb pathway is also a useful one typically want to choose the white half for banalish marshal but every now and then if we really need black man on turn one for maybe a fatal push or thought seize, we can still make that work and then we also have the full playset of unclaimed territory naming knight which is just slightly better than the tournament grounds would be although you can play either one so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play with a nice opening hand get to curve one through four potentially and then we'll just start out with a courtyard in case we need to fatal push a one drop and an elf I'll definitely fatal push all right can play worthy knight first or we can go knight of malice if we want to deal slightly more damage it's going to be a while before I can play another knight since I want to play history on turn three so yeah maybe it's better to knight of malice here and then this will be a white permanence to give this one additional power as well. Turn to Pelt Collector. So it looks like a green Stompy deck. Do have to play Godless Shrine if we want to play History. And yeah, this Kinsbale Cavalier is going to be awesome, especially in combination with the third chapter, giving our knights two additional power. Yurfo, 
that's definitely gonna slow us down. Although, Fatal Push could potentially be an answer. So, how do we want to sequence here? Fatal Push next turn can have Revolt thanks to History Benalia going away. So I guess this turn we just play the Kinsbill Cavalier. I could attack with Knight of Malice and the token still, and then just trade for Yorvo. I guess that's okay. Opponent falls to seven. Five five Yorvo. They maybe have a fight spell to take out Cavalier. All right, it's too bad. That's why I wanted to save Cavalier to potentially play next turn, so they couldn't take it out at sorcery speed. But uh, yeah, Fatal Push will still do the job here. Attack. And our opponent has seen enough. They would have been forced to trade away both creatures here. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable enough hand. Sadly, Chapel will be tapped. But now that we drew another one drop, I guess I still want to play Worthy Knight as soon as possible to start making tokens. So we'll play Chapel tapped and then Saving the one drops until after Worthy Knight might not be such a bad thing. Opponent on mono black. Could have played Pathway there. Um, I mean, Knight of Grace seems kind of good too here. A 3 2 Hexproof from black. So good luck getting past it. Probably gonna lose a Worthy Knight. But we still have another one. And then, just in case, I guess I'll bodyguard to protect Knight of Grace. Which seems to be the most important card. Alright, they're gonna push Worthy Knights. And then I don't really want to attack necessarily, or do I? Yeah, I probably want to wait until I play Knight of Malice. Because I'm trading essentially one damage for two damage. Which doesn't seem worth it. Alright, well, that's a problem. Gonna need Fatal Push to kill that, otherwise we can't really attack into it. Well, speak of the devil. So can sacrifice bodyguard to enable revolts although I don't have to do it right away although I could yeah I guess we'll just kind of empty our hand here and then if they maybe thought sees me again I can sacrifice bodyguard fatal push obliterator a rankle master of pranks Yep. So in response to the trigger, I want to go for the fatal push play. So each player discards a card. Discards of Gutter Bones. Ooh, Kinsbill Cavalier, hello. And yeah, if they want to trade for my Venerable Knight, that's fine by me. Just go to dodge another Obliterator. Grey Merchants drains for four. Uh, yeah, attack with everyone 
Seems fine. If they block here, they're dead. So I guess if they top deck another Grey Merchant, drain me for four, one more from Rankle. That uh, would have done it. So they had an out there, but they didn't draw it. So yeah, pretty clutch play with a fatal push off the top to kill Obliterator. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an interesting hand. I don't actually hate this. A Worthy Knight does combo nicely with Banalish Marshal, if it survives. Since we get to pump the 1-1 tokens. Banalish Marshal doesn't care whether they're human or knight. And then probably just play this tapped for now. Opponent on black green with a scrap heap scrounger. Well, let's hope a worthy knight survives for a few turns. So we can make some tokens. Steel Leaf Champion to play. Alright. So this might be a Galta deck. In which case, if they do manage to play out a Galta, we might be in trouble since we don't get to Fatal Push that one. Um, interesting attack. Kind of implies that they have removal for Banalish Marshal at instant speed. Although, if that's the case, I mean, this is still fine, I think. Alright, the trade happens. And Ronas. Yeah. That's a good one, too. So, I guess for now we'll just play another Banalish Marshal. Keep up Fatal Push. And then we'll have to try and enable revolts to uh, take out Steel Leaf Champion. Bone moves to combat. And sends in both. Alright, I mean, I guess I don't hate just jumping Ronos and then taking 5. And then uh, I can Fatal Push the Steel Leaf Champion. Gilded Goose is acceptable. I think I want a Fatal Push Champion now. I don't think my opponent was necessarily sandbagging Galta here, but just on the off chance. Alright, I said a Rotting Regisaur instead. Alright, get to empty your hands and take it from there. Got a lot of power and toughness to work with. Not sure if I would have preferred killing Regisaur or Steel Leaf here. If I had waited until end of turn. The opponent discarding is definitely relevant. And we've got a lot of toughness to put in front of Regisaur so we don't die. Knight of Malice just blocks Regisaur profitably. Even if they give it plus two plus two and trample. Although of course they could have instant speed removal for one of my Banalsh Marshals. So how about we block like this? Could also take 5 since Ronas doesn't pump himself. Although that seems a little risky. Yeah, I'll block like this. Yeah, Regisaur dies for free. First strike is indeed a thing. Opponent passes. 
Yeah, I guess it's time to start attacking. I guess my opponent's probably holding Collected Company here. So they could present a bunch of creatures at instant speed. Yeah, I guess we just send in Knight of Malice. Don't want to lose any Banalsh Marshals to an instant speed Regisaur. And probably want to keep the token back to Chump. And there's Company. Just a single Scavenging Ooze. It's not the worst. And my opponent concedes. Alright, we'll take those. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one, start with a Venerable Knights. Might see a fatal push here, we do not. Blood Chief's Thirst instead. I would prefer to play Worthy Knight alongside another creature in the same turn. So I could just double one drop right now. Of course, if they don't have removal, playing Worthy Knight first would mean three tokens next turn. But maybe that's being greedy. So let's go double Knight of Ebon Legion. That way also have the flexibility of maybe pumping one of them next turn. Alright, opponent did indeed have Fatal Push, so I'm happy the way we sequenced it here. And then, yeah, get in for one... And then we still have our knight as a mana sink. And it looks like another fatal push. Alright, lots of cheap removal here. And a heartless act for the knight. So as the dust settles, we've got a venerable knight and a human token. Well, not exactly where I was hoping to be, but Hisra Benalia, excellent draw. So let's get in there. And eliminate kills my Venerable Knight, so I don't get value from the plus one counter, which is part of the reason why I wanted to attack first. So we at least secured two damage. Well, so far our opponent has played a lot of removal. Let's see if they eventually present a threat. Thoughtseize can have a look. And... Alright, our opponent's not messing around. So Heartless Act can kill another one of my knights. I could take a bit of a gamble by taking Heartless Act and then hoping they don't draw land for Extinction Event. But if they do draw land, Extinction Event will deal with all my tokens at once. So probably gonna take the event and then I get to hit them for 5, put them to 8. And then have 3 power in play. Maybe we do take the gamble, hit them for 9 down to 4 and if they miss for 1 turn, they're dead. Because Downfall doesn't do anything. Yeah, you know what, I think I'm going to take the gamble here. No land, please. Ah, they found a land. Alright, well, that did not pan out. Although Knight of Grace, I imagine, is pretty good against a mono black deck. And my opponent is at 4, so it doesn't take much here. Probably don't need to play out any more lands at this point. And our opponent's gonna go out on their own terms, activating Castle Lothwain. Alright, I can respect that, so close game here against Mono Black Control. On to the next one. Uh, 
All right, we're on the draw. Yeah, this is probably a keep. We'll need a third land, but Worthy Knight plus Marshall's great, and History is also a nice one. Although, probably can't afford two Thoughtseize, because then we won't have triple white for Banalish Marshall. Facing some sort of a life gain deck. All right. Can decide whether I want to play History or Banalsh Marshal first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So this looks more like a control deck if they're playing Mindstone. So I'm a little bit more interested in casting Thoughtseize, but maybe I can just History, which if they do have a Wrath of God, at least I'll still get the second token. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Alright, just plays out a Skyclave Cleric. That's okay. And a Village Rides to draw two. So not entirely sure what's going on over there. So do we fear a Sweeper next turn? There's not a whole lot I can do about it, except not over commit. And we already have a decent amount of pressure. Although I can probably afford to play one Marshal. And then next turn it could just be dead if they don't wipe the board. Possible my opponent's playing some sort of combo deck with Bolas of Citadel. And all cards being double-faced cards. So that uh, they're never gonna hit a land with Bolas of Citadel. That's probably what's going on here. So I don't think they necessarily have any sweepers. Soul Warden? Huh, they probably wanted to play that one first. So... Yeah, I guess just play another Banalsh Marshal and then attack with all. Alright, center opponent concedes. Yeah, Bolas the Citadel all spells deck is definitely an interesting archetype to explore, but you do need enough life gain to kind of offset casting all those spells off the top for free. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Sadly can't Thoughtseize turn one, so that might slow us down a little bit. But we'll still play Chapel here. Also still need double white for Hister Benalia. Since Unclaimed Territory doesn't work, but we can play Banalsh Marshal. Elves pretty late to the party. Could Thought Seize plus Venerable Knight, I think I prefer playing a Banalsh Marshal. Mindstone's opponent is ramping. Still a tapped chapel here, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, can just marshal again. Hit for eight, and then the next turn we get to maybe empty our hands. This and Nissa. Into Garrick Unleashed. Uh, for nature is always returned. The land fights Would love to top deck a fatal push. And claim territory instead, which is not very helpful. Well, probably gonna have to thought cease to make sure they can't 
cast like an Ugin next turn or what have you. I guess I'll kick things off with Thoughtseize here. Right, just a Mind Stone in hand. Could also send all at Nissa. And then if they want to save Nissa, they have to double chump. Well, at least her opponent's top decking. And eventually the third chapter from history is going to give us a good attack. Out of our way. Ah, there's Fatal Push, although the triple territory situation is still being a little awkward. But what happens if I now attack all? It's probably okay. Alright, so chump trade take eight. Works for me. We should be able to seal the deal next turn. Opponent's got seven mana essentially, another Nissa. So if they make two more blockers, we can kill one and attack for the win. So the mana wasn't. Super smooth because of the triple territory, but it doesn't come up a whole lot. Unfortunately for you, they're quite hungry. So they don't have any good attacks. And with one card left in hand, can't imagine too many things that get them out of this. And then we'll kill a land. All right, and that'll do it. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Mountain into Scorespitter. Don't mind trading Bodyguard for Spitter. And then next turn we can maybe go Knight plus Thoughtseize. Depends what land we draw as well, otherwise I might want to keep my untapped land for turn 3 for Marshall. There's also an argument for preserving my creatures, since we've got some synergies to enhance them. But it's gonna get stomped, but actually get to sacrifice Bodyguard here, which will fizzle the creature half of Bonecrusher Giant. So that actually worked out quite nicely. All things considered. So we'll take two. And another Marshall. Yeah. I think I might just thought cease to take away removal. So the Marshall survives and then just play Chapel so we're guaranteed turn three Marshall. Just have to take a bit of damage from Spitter. Alright, Torbrain, Spitter, Robber. Probably take Torbrain and then... A 3-3 should stabilize us next turn. Even if we have to take a bit of damage here. So our opponent's gonna empty their hands. And finds a pretty good one here. Knight of Malice.
Gotta hope they don't top deck a burn spell for Marshall. Although they can also activate Castle to still attack with Robber of the Rich. So we might still see an all-out attack, and then if I block a Spitter, they're probably not gonna pump. Alright, just a Robber attacking. Yeah, I mean, I'll block and then if they use Castle, they can't cast uh, two Knights. Seems a worthwhile trade. But I'm gonna go for the two Knights instead. Alright, at least Fatal Push can deal with Knight of Malice nicely. And then probably play an author Banolish Marshal. And pass. And if they pump with Castle, that's their entire turn gone. We'll play Cavalier next turn. I might wait on Cavalier for one more turn here and just play Worthy Knight to start making a couple tokens. Don't want to see another Torbrain, that could be an issue. They might have an Ember Cleave in there too. They do seem to be holding something in hand. Maybe another Bone Crusher Giant. Champion attacks. So I guess they could like pump with Castle and have a burn spell or in the case of Stomp if I block with Venerable Knight they could finish off my Venerable Knight. Could just take it. Yeah, so the worry if I block with Worthy Knight is like a Castle Pump plus Shock. If I block with Venerable Knight, just a Stomp would be enough to kill Knight even without a whole pump situation. So I either block with Worthy Knight or I take it. And I think I take it. Because getting to make those human tokens with double Marshall in place is quite valuable. All right, is it time for Cavalier get aggressive? Yeah, don't hate it. And I'll probably attack with Marshall since that's a creature I'm not going to block with and they don't have any profitable blocks on them at the moment. Alright, they're at 4. Next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. And we've got 4 blockers for 5 attackers at 10 life, so... There's no Torbrain, which was the card I was potentially afraid of. They can still activate Castle here. All my knights still have double strike, so even if they have a burn spell for Cavalier, we would still trade here. So I suppose... Block something like this. Seems fine. And then if they stomp Cavalier, they still trade. And they're just gonna activate Castle. Alright, so that should do it. Sweet. Close one here against Monored. Pretty key thought sees to take away Torbrain, which otherwise could have dealt a ton of damage. So yeah, overall, we did pretty well with our Black-White Knights. 
It's a nice mix of being an aggressive deck while having just enough interaction to get by in Best of One and Historic. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.